Hello and welcome again to my channel EV Talk. My name's Sly. This is an update to a previous series of videos that I had made on the evchargers.com.au EVSE. Now that's quite a mouthful, but that is as we stand today. There will be a product name released shortly. The people at evchargers.com.au have told me that they can't release any information on that yet because they're waiting on be it copyright or a patent or some such. So a product name will be announced soon. Other than that, this new unit that you see behind me here is the production unit. The unit I had during the unboxing didn't have the same firmware. It didn't have the same settings available to us for the different current levels here in Australia. The reason that's important is you not only want to set the correct current for a given outlet, obviously 10 amp for a 10 amp outlet, 15 for a 15, but you need some in-between settings. Now, the following video that I've already made will explain that further. But in a nutshell, if you're sharing power or if you're a guest at a location, you may not want to draw every last drop out of an outlet if that outlet is being used for other things as well. So what are you going to do if you don't have a setting that's in between the actual outlet rating? In other words, if you have a 10 amp outlet available to you and you set your EVSC for 10 amps and it's going to pull all that 10 amps out of that outlet, you're likely to trip circuit breakers or blow fuses. You need the option to set it lower. And that should be true of all the different tails that are available with this unit. This unit has multiple tails using a universal type connector. Now, I must say, as much as that's an advantage, it's also a disadvantage. You'll see in the unboxing videos, those tails are connected via a 32 amp. We'll call it a commando club. It's actually a, a club. Uh, commando connector. It's a CEE blue connector. So they're very big and chunky. It's a lot to pack into a bag. It's a lot to carry around. But the advantages for me at the moment outweigh that bulk. Now I've used this out in the field already. We've just gone on a little field trip. Uh, I'm hoping I can show you a couple of videos of that. But having the versatility of this EVSE outweighs the bulk of that universal connector. So let's have a look first of all, before I hand over to the pre-recorded um, audio, let's have a look now at what is provided on the settings of this EVSE. Here, we adjust by pressing and holding the setting, and then we can step through Right, so I'll just talking about what we're stepping through there. We have, as you can see, a 30 amp, a 20 amp. We continue on to 18, 15, 13, 10, and 8. So those are the ones that we find is very important. 8 amp because we're under 10. 13 because we're under 15. If you're confident that your outlet can provide everything to you, sure, choose 10 and choose 15 if that's what you're plugging into. Same with the 32. You'll see we've got options there as well. But if you're going to blow circuit breakers, no worries. Take it down a notch and try again. But if you've only got fuses, it gets a bit messy, especially if you've got to call the owner over and say, hey, I've blown a fuse. Have a listen to the following audio. Well, the 10 amp you would think is the one that you would normally want for a domestic socket, but Realistically, if you uh, have got your jug running or a kettle run, you know, your kettle or your toaster running or so on, you could put your circuit breaker in danger of tripping. Now, if you're a guest at some Airbnb and you're just going to expect to draw the full 10 amps, that might be a little bit rude, uh, especially if you have to ask the owner to come and reset the circuit breaker. So you might want to play it safe and instead... Set it down for an overnight charge to 8 amps. There we go. Now then you press and hold to set that. Once it beeps, there it is. You can see that right here. 
that is now set for 8 amps usage. Now you can plug it into the car and away you go. Now what about the other settings? Well, we found that on the previous model, when we set to 10 amps, because I've got a pretty good 10 amp supply here and I'm in the garage and there was nothing else on that circuit. We were getting 9.3 amps when we were actually drawing current from that socket and charging the car. Compared to the EVSE or the granny charger that came with the Mitsubishi Outlander that we were plugging in, the, the PHEV, where that guy usually managed to get 6 amps, we were supplying 9.3 so this EVSE, well, this is uh, called me future sly, I guess, as I'm coming in over the top of this video. Uh, I just wanted to interrupt, and that is that, yes, the evaluation unit that we had provided 9.3 amps on a particular outlet that we were using. When we tested this one, the new production unit, we were getting 8.8 uh, and varying to 8.7. So slightly different. Now, why is that? Now, we weren't on exactly the same outlet, uh, but that shouldn't make that much difference. Really, we're in the same household. Um, but it just goes to show that the evaluation unit may have had heavier terminations inside the unit, heavier wiring or so. We don't know. All I know is that the evaluation unit was a hefty 9.3 coming out of a 10 amp circuit, but the, this production unit is 8.8. .8 still way above what we get on a typical EVSE. But I thought I'd better interject and, and let you know that one right there. So I'll, uh, I'll hand you back now to the pre-recorded video. Now, let's have a look at these other settings, these other current settings. Let's step through. 32 amp speak for itself. That's the three phase 32 amp sockets that are available. And the three phase 32 amp, we must always remember that when we're using that, with this kind of EVSE, we are using one phase of those three phases. So the wiring in this EVSE and its tails is heavy enough to handle the 32 amps that is provided, but it is just that one phase of the three. We still have to have plugs to plug into the three phase connector but it's actually working on that one phase and for those of you that like numbers that'll be 240 volts times 32 amps which is seven kilowatts which happens to be what a lot of cars max out at on their ac charging ports including the new byd atto 3. so that's a good one but again You've got to have a good supply out in regional Australia. If they're using their 32 amp supply to run their oven and other things, you might want to instead. And this might end up happening after you've blown a fuse or a circuit breaker, set it to 30 amps like that. And you are a nice citizen and you're allowing them to cook their dinner probably for you and you're still drawing a good 30 amps. What else do we have available here? We have 30. Now, 20 is a bit of an odd one. That's for a really stressed circuit, but I have seen those. Whoops. Let's go back there. I have seen on PlugShare, on the PlugShare app, where although you're plugging into a 32 amp circuit, the owner has asked to please not draw more than 15, 20 or 24 amps. I guess that's because, as I said earlier, they know that they're a bit iffy in uh, what they have available for guests to charge up. So please be aware, if you, especially if you're going into regional caravan parks and the like, ask what you're allowed to draw. Ask what they're comfortable with, and, and they should know. I think they'll probably know because they'll have blown a circuit breaker or two in the past. So what else have we got? We've looked at that, that, 18. Now that's an odd one out, I must admit, because I don't know where we have 20 amp circuits nearby. I know they're around. I've heard that people have used them. 
Uh, and they again, they're a three phase circuit. They have five pins or you can get a three pin version. But the tail that comes with this EVSE kit is a five pin 20 amp circuit. So again, we have a setting here at 18 that will again allow us to be good citizens and not suck the full 20 amps if, if that's all they happen to have available. So there's the 20 amp and after that one, we have a setting for a healthy 15 amp, which you could probably get at most caravan parks if you've got a dedicated circuit. So once again, be aware of who you're sharing that 15 amp post with. And if it looks like you need to be more careful, we have an option for you where we can come down to a very polite 13 amps. There it is. So you can see this EVSE helps you to be a good citizen and not keep tripping <laughs> circuit breakers, which would be annoying not only for you, but for everybody else around you. Same deal with the 10, we can go down to an eight. So um, please let me know what you think. Let me know if you wanna see more and uh, I'd be more than happy to make little videos of little helpful hints for charging and for individual EVs if I can as well. So this is Sly of EV Talk. Thank you for watching. Right, okay, now the reason I've butted in again uh, is that I just wanted to um, finish off, if you like, my little review by saying, as much as there are all these positives, a couple of little negatives, which I just want to touch on here. I believe they are not overwhelming, but you need to be aware of them. First one is we've already talked about the bulk on the, um, the universal connectors. Have a look at those. Uh, I don't have them here with me right this second. So have a look at those on the previous video. The other is the type of plastic used on this body. I found it to have a feeling of being a little bit on the brittle side and I'd be very nervous dropping this on some paving or on concrete. Uh, a rubberized material, particularly on the edges, would have been great. Um, so I, I'm thinking personally of actually rounding up the, or, or wrapping this in like some heavy rubber bands uh, around the middle. So you know, probably in two or three locations along the body of the unit. So it's got some impact resistance if it does fall. I don't know what I could do about it uh, on the corners, but at least on the main body, it might get a bit of cushioning. And the fact that those connectors are so bulky, it can get a bit of a handful when you're pulling it out of the bag, because in the bag, I've kept not only the EVSE, but the 10 amp tail, because that's what I'm using mostly. And I knew where I was going. That's what I was going to have to use. So it's kind of a bit of a handful. And I've learned that what I do is I take one out at a time. I take the EVSE out, prepare it, have the, I don't plug it into the car straight away. I have it at the ready. And then I take out the tail and I connect that up to the EVSE, plug it in, don't switch it on just yet. Um, oh, sorry, then I switch it on. And then I get the details and I can set my current and confirm my current setting. Then I plug it into the car and all is good. But that's kind of a bit of a juggle. So it could be dropped. So bear that in mind. And the final bit is, well, competitively, purely on dollars, you would think, well, this is an expensive unit at about a thousand dollars a thousand seventy five as of november 2022 however when you look at the costs of the tails the heavy cables carrying up to 32 amps the lockable connectors at the outlet side and also on the interconnecting ce blue connectors they're 32 amp connectors so you've got an awful lot of product there way over and above a typical EVSC that's on the market. So it's justified and so far performance justifies it as well. Uh, I would not go personally out in regional Australia with just the standard EVSC that is provided with most vehicles. Now that's not including Tesla because Tesla does a wonderful job 
with their little EVSC, they have universal tails as well, but you've got to buy the extra high-end tails, so the three-phase connected tails. You do get 10 amp and 15 amp with the Tesla uh, EVSC. With the BYD803, you simply have a 10 amp EVSC. Really, I wouldn't be traveling out in regional Australia with just that 10 amp connector. Thank you for watching and please comment. Let me know what you think and ask for more stuff. So thanks for watching. I've just noticed something on the C blue connector on the new production unit. There's no locking ring anymore. I'm sure the old one had a locking ring. Remember I had that problem in the video of, of figuring out how to unlock it or was that just the cap? I, I don't know. But anyway, the new one doesn't have a locking ring. It's got that cap retainer, but it, it doesn't have a locking ring. I wonder why they took that away. Maybe I should mention it. Do you think it's important? No, we'll see if anyone notices.